Today I'll be talking about the Tau Performance System and how we can use this tool to better evaluate the performance of our code running on the Theta platform at Argon. So the Tau Performance System is a versatile performance evaluation tool that supports most HPC platform compilers, runtime systems, and it has three components. Instrumentation, where we add hooks to your program. Measurement, so that we can perform profiling or tracing, uh, access hardware performance counters, generate performance data. And then the analysis phase, where we evaluate the application performance by performance data in our visualizers. So these three components of Tau uh, will be highlighted in this talk, and I'll focus on ways to easily instrument your code, generate the performance data, and, and look at the performance of MPI with OpenMP applications today. So the top performance system supports many different languages as far as automatic instrumentation is concerned. These include Fortran, C++, C, Python, Java, Spark, Spark for data analysis, and it supports automatic instrumentation at the compiler level, even at the runtime. There are many different runtimes that we support, including MPI, OpenShmem, RMC, and other PGAS runtimes. We also support C thread libraries, OpenMP. We have an OpenMP instrumentation API. You can mix and match MPI with multiple threading models. We also support GPU executions. And uh, you'll see that Tau generates performance data uh, using either profiling or tracing modes of measurement. We can also use SCORPI package. It's an excellent package which can be used to generate native OTF2 traces and generate efficient call path profiles uh, in the Cubex format. And you'll see that uh, Tau has many different uh, interfaces to other tools such as the PAPI toolkit for accessing hardware performance counter data. Uh, for analysis, we have Paraprof and Force Explorer tools, and we also have a database called TauDB. We have a 3D profile browser in Paraprof, which I will demonstrate in today's talk. So you're probably wondering, what can Tau show me? Uh, you can measure the time spent in different application code regions using Tau. You can see the time spent in routines and outer loops and also inner loops. You can also see the contribution of each statement within a loop too. And what is the time spent in open empty loops? What are the regions? Instead of time, you can also substitute uh, hardware performance counters in your measurement. So this can show you detailed information about the data caches. It can show you how many floating point instructions, how many vector operations are executed by your code, and associate them right back to the loop and routine level. You can see the other hardware performance counters and even uncore counters. Now, Tau has interfaces with Zappy and Liquid. Liquid is another tool that allows you to perform these measurements, and you can. Uh, get detailed information about uh, hardware performance counters from Tappy and Liquid, and even get energy measurements from there. You can also look at the memory usage of your application. You can see the memory footprint, how much physical memory was being used, where was the memory allocated, deallocated, were there any leaks? Did you exceed the array bounds while accessing the memory? You can see the application's energy usage in joules on the entire node. You can see the IO characteristics. So you could see what is the read and write bandwidth or the amount of data that access for each file based on each file name. You can see the total volume of data. You can even see the contribution of each phase of your application. It, using Tau's performance database technology, you can see the scalability of the code and evaluate how it scales across different core counts and what is the runtime breakdown of the application. So to get started, uh, just uh, some basics. With any performance evaluation,
validation tool, you need to add hooks in the code to perform these measurements or the instrumentation phase. Now you can do this using a source preprocessor where a compiler script can substitute your regular compiler name and scripts such as tau cc.sh or tau s90.sh can be used in place of ftn. You can also have a filter file, a selective instrumentation file that can narrow the focus of instrumentation so that you can reduce the runtime overhead or dilation and narrow the focus down to specific code regions that you're interested in. This uses a toolkit called the Program Database Toolkit or PDT for parsing the source code. We can, instead of parsing the source code, we can use the compiler to automatically insert hooks in your code using a special flag, and you can set a environment variable to enable that. You can also use Tau's runtime preloading capability. Now this only works with dynamic executables, not static. And by default, we generate static executables on the KXP40. So if you want to use this feature, where you can just use tau exec to launch an uninstrumented binary, you do need to compile it with the dash dynamic flag. This is a linking flag. When you use the dash dynamic flag, you will be able to generate a dynamic executable. And then we can intercept the runtime calls, whether these are calls from the MPI library or IO or, or from the OpenMP runtime, and then measure the time spent in those regions and also enable other ways of instrumenting the code. So there are two distinct modes in which we operate with Tau. The first is profiling, which generates the summary statistics. So you can see, like on the left side, how much total time was spent in different code regions. On the right, we see tracing, where we generate event logs. These are timestamp events, which along the timeline can show you what each process was doing at any point in time. So you'll be able to measure the contribution of each code region and visualize it on the basis of the timeline display. Now this timeline display is shown in the jump shot tool, which comes from Argon and is bundled as part of the Tau performance system. We thank Argon for allowing us to do that. And it shows you when the events take place on a timeline. So when you are measuring the contribution of a code, uh, say in a profile, it's important to see that with timer instrumentation, you can generate inclusive and exclusive time. And what I mean by this is, say this function foo, which takes say 100 seconds, calls an instrumented function bar where start and stop timers trigger at the entry and exit of bar and say bar takes 25 seconds. Then you could say that this orange exclusive time spent in foo is uh, 100 minus 25 or 75 seconds. Okay. So we want to sort the performance data based on the exclusive time so we can identify those code regions that take up the most time. Now, there are two distinct modes of inserting the hooks. The first is direct instrumentation with probe, where we actually have a start and a stop call for a timer. And within that code region, we can accurately measure the contribution of that code region. It is important to note that you should use this for coarse grained measurements and not fine grained measurements, where the time for the the execution of the code region is uh, very small. But we also have support for indirect measurements using sampling. Now, with sampling, uh, you may have used tools such as GPROC that provide sampling. You do not need to modify the code, and it requires minimal effort because we just periodically interrupt the program, see where it is, and look at the program counter. And then on the basis of that, we construct a profile. So, for example, if your application was running in 100 seconds, and say the sampling period was one second, and you received, say, 30 samples in a function called foo, then you would say that, uh, you know, foo probably takes around 30 seconds. So that's the indirect way of uh, performance measurement using sampling. 
Here it's illustrated where I have a function main which calls foo, and we periodically interrupt the program like this, and it sees where the program counter is, and then records that information, and then we need to, uh, at MPI finalize or so, at the end of the program, correlate the measurements and the uh, samples back to the source line numbers. On the other hand, with instrumentation, every function's entry and exit calls are modified, and we put a start and stop timer call, and whenever they trigger, you can accurately measure that function. Now, it's important to note that for small functions, it can cause a relatively large overhead, and so we have support in Tau for throttling. Tau is one of the few tools that supports throttling of instrumentation at runtime, which eliminates those lightweight routines that execute frequently. And you can get a filter file. You can also do this filtering at runtime or compile time. But today, I want to introduce a tool which relies on Tau's runtime preloading capabilities, where a library is preloaded in the context of an executing application, and we intercept all the runtime calls. So we substitute one wrapper library with another, and uh, we can accurately measure the time spent in MPI, OpenMP, POSIX IO calls. We can look at memory allocation, deallocation routines. We can even wrap an external library and then measure that. And what's important is that you can also enable other modes of measurement, such as sampling. So you can have a hybrid system where you accurately measure with timers the MPI and OpenMP calls while you enable sampling to look at the rest of the code. So uh, you can look at uh, communication matrix plays. You can generate OTF2 traces natively in Tau using this Tau exec. We can also uh, enable event-based sampling. So uh, let me just show you how, how this works. So if you have an uninstrumented application and you run it like this with AP run, such as AP run minus N64 error out, then to track the performance of just the MPI, we can say tau exec error out instead of error out. Uh, if you want to enable event-based sampling, you would compile the program with dash G so that the symbol information is Preserve and then say tau exec dash cbs or event based sampling error out. And this will generate profile files that show you the contribution of individual statements. And instead of wall clock time, we can also use a hardware performance counter to make these measurements, such as a counter from the SAPI library. You can specify the EBS source or the overflow counts as the EBS period, so that you could say, for example, please interrupt the program when 100,000 data cache misses have taken place instead of when 20 milliseconds have elapsed, okay? Now, Tau can be configured with multiple measurement modes and configuration options, including different compilers. And so you can specify tags to choose a specific configuration or a compiler option. So here I'm choosing a, an explicit MPI PDT PAPI tag, which corresponds to the tau configuration and enabling the IO implementation using tau exec with a dash T flag. Now it's important to note that if you want to track the time spent in the OpenMP runtime, you must use a tau configuration that uses the OpenMP tools interface, or rather our library, which uh, has hooks in the OpenMP runtime. This is a separate library that Intel had open sourced, uh, and it was adopted as part of the LLVM OpenMP runtime. And we use this library to substitute the regular OpenMP library with this library that has hooks to call the timer call. We expect compilers to implement the full OpenMP specification with support for OMPT or the tools interface uh, in the next few years. And uh, we expect that uh, this will get even better and our overhead for tracking OpenMP calls will reduce substantially as, as we get support from these uh, compilers. 
We can also track memory operations and load and interposition libraries like this. So what does this really do? We want to perform measurements and we want to track the time spent in these different code regions. Well, with runtime preloading, we inject the tau dynamic shared object in the executing application. And as I mentioned before, this only works with dynamic executables. So you must compile your program with the dash dynamic and also the dash D option so that the simple information is preserved if you want to use the event-based sampling feature. And then we can use tau exec while launching the application. Okay, so it's simple as that. And uh, let me show you, you can follow it along by you know, creating a directory on uh, the project uh, area and untarring this workshop tarball, you load the module and you can go to this directory, you can compile it and in a second window, say get a, a, a skew sub uh, allocation and then unload the Darshan module, load Intel and Tau modules and run this application like this, okay? So let me just show you how uh, how you would use Tau in a in this setting. So what what I want to show here is that uh, this is the I hope you can all see the screen. Here I have uh, the NAS parallel benchmark which I just untarred, and I do a make clean. I do a module unload version. Module load Intel. Module load Tau. And then I can say make sweep minus J. Now this is building the NAS parallel BT benchmark using the FTN Fortran compiler. Note that there is a dash T flag over here. And then while linking in, I have added this dash dynamic flag, okay? So at the end, I get a binary like this. Now I have just done a Q sub dash I and gotten this node. So here, if I want to run the code, I would set for this MPI with OpenMP benchmark some value for the OpenMP number of threads. So let me say select four threads and on a single node, I can run this on 16 cores of uh, the KNL platform. So I would run this saying use 16 MPI RAM and four nodes and BTMD like this. Now, as it is running, you uh, you can see that it's uh, using four threads per process and and total number of threads is 64. And you're probably wondering, this is a highly tuned benchmark. It's the NAS parallel benchmark 3.3. And we have the latest hardware. We have the latest Intel compilers. We use the O3 flag. This is what a typical user would use. Uh, so how, when is it doing? Is it running at peak performance? What can I do to measure its contribution? I'm running it like this, btmz.b.16. Now, this is a typical case where you have an MPI with OpenMP code. You can instrument the MPI only region. You can instrument it at the thread level using the p-thread options in Tau, or you can go and instrument the full OpenMP region using the OMPD substrate. Now here, uh, let's see, it says the time taken in seconds is 56.93. And it seems reasonable at first glance that uh, it ran this code on the BTMZ, the results are okay. So if I want to evaluate the performance of this, Instead of 
Moderator, oh, is that you? You did something. Yeah, I just okay. I'm trying to kick it. Okay, but it's um, not kicking. It's so what are we doing? Just chat. Um, just send a chat out to everybody. Oh, someone says now it seems good. Why can't I hear? Can you can you, can you hear us? Um, there we I, just, I can hear you. Sounds much just, better now. I've logged out and logged back in. Oh, okay. Now, oh, Samir, um, uh, we lost, uh, we couldn't hear you for about the last three minutes. Um, let's uh, okay. back up a little bit. Um, sure. What, what, what's so the what last thing that, that you folks? What I did here is uh, I ran the code using AP Run, and then I just ran the same NAS parallel benchmark using the OpenMP tools interface tag and event-based sampling. So this is the unmodified, uninstrumented binary VT, and I'm just running it. And at the end of this, it produced profile files, one from each thread. Then I packed up these profile files using the paraprof dash dash pack command as shown here. And then copied them over to my Mac over here and launched the Paraprof tool on the PPK file. Now, PPK is a packed profile format. And I see the top level window like this, which shows every MPI rank and the thread. And these colors represent the different time spent in various routines. So if I click on this, it shows me that it was spending as much as 37.5 seconds out of the total execution time of roughly a minute in just a scheduler yield operation. And you can see the time spent is 28 to 36 seconds. So the time it was taking to run this code was uh, was quite significant and it was all spent over here. Now, if I look at the uh, the web page for run 
stunning job. And ALCS has done a great job in putting up all the web pages for running the jobs and all the options that they take. They clearly mentioned that uh, you should use the CC argument to specify CPU affinity. Now, I know the threads are just bouncing around the different CPUs. And uh, the CPU affinity is specified using the dash CC depth. And it says clearly on the web page that when you use the AP run with the dash D argument, you should always use the dash CC depth option. Now, this is a common user error where a person may have used a different system and they just forgot, as in this case, to launch it with the CC depth option. So this is how I ran it. And let me try running it again. Let me get rid of all the profile files and say AP run. And in fact, uh, AP run minus N16 dash D4 thread and dash CC depth. And then tau exec dash C OMPT dash EBS and then the BT application. So now, I'm using CPU affinity and, and binding those threads. And I'm wondering, is it any better? How much time would this execution take instead of close to a minute? And you can see the time spent here is down from whatever 50 seconds to roughly 10 seconds. So it made a huge difference and I can, Look at the profile file. Let me try opening up this profile file. Again, let me pack it and say PPK, NAS parallel, benchmark, beta, and give it a name, maybe PC depth.ppk. Okay, and SCP. This file ccdep.ppk over here. Oh, sorry. I made a mistake. I need to say SCP, not Paraprof. And in fact, I have uh, two of these files that I have downloaded, the first experiment and the second one. And I can I can launch Paraprof locally using Okay. So this will launch both of the application uh, profiles. So here is the old one, NPB theta, and here is the new one with the CC depth. I can look at the thread statistics table, which can show me the time spent in all the code regions and open MP regions, MPI regions, the rest of the application. And you can see here the inclusive time was at 48.16 seconds for the thread zero. And I can look at the time spent in each region over here. I can even go down inside an MPI operation such as this, MPI wait all, and see what exactly it was doing for say 5.1 seconds. And you can see that I can even look at the internal routine, the system call, and see that uh, it spent some time in the MPID CHBI progress. We can see the scheduler, R pending, NEM, 
DNI, pull, no op, and the various internal functions and the scheduler yield samples that it's taken. And you can also compare between different threads. Like this is the time spent in various functions on thread zero. And you can see the OpenMP loop in the Y solve, X solve, RHS, the Z solve area, and the MPI wait time. And compare it with a, another execution. So here, if I say add thread to a comparison window, and it's showing me that it took 18 seconds in scheduler yield on this particular thread, then, or if you want to see the total time, you could change that to say select metric inclusive time. And you see the total time spent here. And if I want to compare thread zero, I can add it like this. So you can see that the time spent reduced from 48.1 seconds to 10.7 seconds, or it came down to like 22% of the original time. You can also see the 3D visualization with Paraprof and look at the time spent in each application function and MPI rank within the same view. In the 3D display, I can look at the total shape of the application. This is the triangle mesh, this is the bar plot, which shows me what each thread was doing at any given point over the execution. And you can also look at the function and thread slider windows, which can help you zoom into a given spot in the application profile and look at the contribution of that thread. like this. Right mouse button is to translate, left mouse button is to rotate. Then look at the scatter plots where you can see the contribution of each of those ranks, even the topology plots, and, and so on. So in this way, Tau can be used very easily without any modification to look at the performance of your code. And we can see how much time is spent for each of those application functions. Here's the thread statistics table that shows you the new profile and the time spent in, in it is like 10 seconds over here. And you can see the time spent in the OpenMP barrier as it relates to different code regions. Now, I've copied the PPK file, but I've not copied the source. If I did copy the source, I could see the source view by looking at the show source code for those routines that we have uh, performed data for. And you can see the l solve X solve, Y solve routine, the XYZ directions for this code. And you can even go down inside a loop and look at the time spent in individual statements within that loop, like this. So getting back to uh, getting back to the slides. We, what we showed here is we just take an uninstrumented binary, just compile it with dash D, dash dynamic flag, so that we create a dynamic executable, and then we can intercept the MPI and OpenMP call in this using the tau exec tool. This is the, as, as you call the level zero tool, you don't need to do anything to your binary, but you get a wealth of information about individual lines in the code and the, the contribution of the different code regions within the MPI, OpenMP, and the rest of the application. So you can read more about this code on the web. And if you want to instrument the source code, you can also look at the 
make file or, or the make.def file that comes with uh, this and change that uh, to use a different compiler. But by default, we just say make suite. And if you want to use source instrumentation, you could change the Fortran compiler name from FTN to something like tau f77.sh and compile it. But tau exec is the tool that uh, will allow you to look at the, the performance of MPI and OpenMP layers. And you can either enable the event-based sampling with the dash TBS flag, or you can set an environment variable called tau sampling equals one. We have many different uh, runtime environment variables, and we'll see those towards the end of the slide. But uh, you can choose either of them. The important thing is just unload the Darshan module, load the Intel and Tau modules, run the code like this, tau exec t OMPT with the event-based sampling. And then either on the head node, you can launch Paraprop directly, or you can use Pulley to do the visualization. I prefer to just pack everything up in a PPK file, transfer it to my uh, laptop and launch it locally. And then you can right click on a node, say show the thread statistics table. There are many other windows here that you can explore. And here are some examples of looking at the time spent in the application where we can expand a particular routine. You can even click on these columns and move them to sort them in different ways and say, show me the source code and jump to the source code over there. There are other examples where instead of just taking a sample, I'm also able to look at uh, the call stack and I can use the tau EBS unwind equals one if I wanted to look at the entire call stack every time a sample is taken. Now, I should warn you that this is a very expensive option. Whenever we take the sample, we are unwinding the entire call stack and then recording the, the addresses of those functions. And then later on, at the end of the execution, we are translating those addresses to the source line numbers. But if you want to look at the, the, uh, this example here, I can see that uh, MPI receive was taking up about uh, 74 seconds in one of the data server tasks. Uh, and then I can see where it was called from in multiple locations. So I can identify the call site of that task and the entire column stack. So here, if I open the unwind node, I can see the exact DDI server, which calls the DDI receive, which finally called the, the MPI receive call and the time spent in the DNI poll or, or the internal function whose name is DNI SS message get next W tag or TQ get event. And it shows you the time spent over there based on the samples that it collected. Now this library does not have symbol information. So you cannot see the exact line number and it appears as zero, but you can still see some meaningful name of the routine. Unless the, the library has been stripped, but thankfully our vendors are good enough to not uh, strip the library. So we can still see some interesting symbol information. And th these are examples of using tau to see the progress within the MPI receive. It takes 11.3 seconds. We have other windows, and this is an example of the thread relations, uh, call path thread relations window, where you can see the block which shows a given function and its immediate parents and immediate children. Now the dot tau application is a dummy timer that we have created which runs through the entire uh, lifetime of a thread. So it starts at the MPI in it and then goes till MPI finalized. In the case of uh, a thread, it may start at the pre-thread create instance and go on until the thread joins the execution or, or the open MP thread gets created and, uh, and then finally it uh, ends. So here I can see the time spent in MPI receive and the context 
it kind of adds up the time for the various components. And you can see the time spent in uh, various instances where NTRC was called. And you can see that out of 74.8 seconds, 8.7 came from this call side, 26.1 came from that call side. And, and uh, it can help you navigate and you can go down to the exact location to see you have the data server spending its time. Now, Tau also has uh, a built in support for creating selective instrumentation files. Now, recall that when you use timer based instrumentation, whether it is from rewriting the source code or uh, using compiler based instrumentation, you can throttle away the instrumentation in lightweight routine at runtime. Now, Paraprof allows you to create a selective instrumentation file where you can create this filter that will specify what functions should not be instrumented. And here, I'm showing you the mass parallel benchmark with the routines that were excluded at runtime based on lightweight routine. And it took 10 microseconds per call and 100,000 calls to exclude these functions. So these took less than 10 microseconds per call and were called over 100,000 times. And you can change these numbers right here in the interface and say if you decided that for you, even if the function took, say, less than 25 microseconds in each call and it was executed over 10,000 times, you don't want to instrument it. Maybe you are doing a full event trade and you don't want uh, these frequently executing functions to appear in it. So you can create this filter file like this and click save, and it will generate the profile uh, filter file. And then you can re instrument the application where you can specify this file and say, please use this select file to re instrument my code so you don't even touch these functions in any way. Now, this works with the PDT and GNU compiler currently, and we are working with LLVM to enable such a functionality there as well. And here are some other views of the performance data that Paraprof can show. Is the bar plot that I showed you. This is the optimized instrumentation where I can now see the X, Y, and Z calls phases and the time spent in that. This is by re-instrumenting the code using compiler-based instrumentation. But I can also use source instrumentation using the toolkit called the Program Database Toolkit, where we parse the application source code, we analyze the intermediate representation, and create program database files that contain enough information about the location of functions. And then the Tau instrumenter will take the original application source code and then create the instrumented code where we put the start and stop calls. It's a little bit like this, where the Tau instrumentation instrumenter reads the application source, analyzes it, and then it will use the instrumentation specification file the filter file, which includes the, uh, the, the functions that should be excluded, and then creates the copy of the source code like this. So how do we put this together? Well, I mentioned earlier that Tau supports many different compilers, measurement, and thread options. So when you compile an instance of Tau with, say, Intel compilers, you enable profiling with hardware performance counters using PAPI, enable MPI, OpenMP, it creates a configuration file in the form of a unique sub make file. Each measurement configuration of Tau corresponds to this unique sub make file when you generate it. And you can see multiple of these sub make files with the tags, the same tags that we use, for instance, the dash T OMPT tag. So you can pick an environment variable called Tau make file and point it to the location of the configuration file that you want to choose. In this case, we're using it for the Intel compiler with PAPI support, with MPI, but it does not support threads in this instance because it's just Intel, PAPI, MPI, PDT. We can also optionally set the tau options environment variable. For example, if you wanted to specify compiler-based instrumentation, you could just enable that. And then change the name of the compiler 
to one of these compiler scripts that Tau provides. Once you create the binary, note that this can be a static binary as well because you have added the instrumentation in the program. You don't need to link it with the dash dynamic flag as we did earlier with Tau exec. And you don't need to use the dash G option as well if you're using source instrumentation because the source kind of, once the instrumentation is added to that, it includes the source line information. But it never hurts to add the dash G. I highly recommend that you do that just to, whenever you build your application. And then you run the application, you launch pprof or paraprof, the GUI, and see the, the contribution of various code regions. Now, if you want to install it yourself on a different machine, I would recommend that you start with the PDT application. Uh, you configure it, then you install tau using arch equals cray cnl uh, or x86 64 and then configure it like this we recommend using the bfd equals download unwind equals download which pulls in the bin utils package or the lib unwind package so that you can translate the address to the source location and you can also unwind the call stack to use this unwind package and this is how you configure it with uh, on different Linux clusters or on Theta. And then finally, you will choose a tau make file using either Cray CNL or x 3664. Cleaning up for backend. Pardon? Is, is there a question? That have come out recently. Things that... No, there are no questions. OK. And you can also install Tau on your uh, Mac uh, laptops like this, and uh, Windows and Linux in this manner, so that you can get Paraprof to view. So once you load the Tau module and you look at the dollar Tau, which is basically the Tau Tracy and lib directory, you'll see all these stub make files. Now this slide is the most important thing if you are using source instrumentation because you have to choose the tau configuration that you want to use for your application. This is with MPI, with Intel compilers, and it can use source instrumentation because the program database toolkit or PDT flag is here. This configuration uses a PATI as well we have OpenMP instrumentation using a source-to-source -source instrumental called Opari. It comes from Research Center Eulish. We can use MPI with pthreads in this configuration, or OpenMP tools interface, or OMPT, which uses our custom OpenMP library based on the LLVM uh, Intel package. And then we can use OpenMP tools interface with uh, MPI or without MPI here. So you can pick one. So for automatic source instrumentation with OpenMP and MPI, I could pick this one, which says PAPI, OMPT. Ligand protein co-crystal structures in order to MPI, PDT, OpenMP. And then compile the code. What's important about these tags is that when you configure tau with say PAPI and MPI, it creates this stub make file with the configuration parameters, which includes the location of the PAPI directory compilers and so on. And it creates this shared PAPI MPI PDT libtau.so. And if you configure it without PAPI, you would get these tags without PAPI. So you can specify this dash T with a comma separated list of options, which is PAPI, MPI, PDT, which will load this, or you can even say just PAPI, and by default, how uses the MPI configuration. We live in an MPI-centric world. If you didn't want MPI, you should use serial instead of that. And you can also use a dry run to see what library is preloading by just saying dash S. That it will not actually execute the program, but it will just show you what it will do when you run it without dasher. There are many other compile time options that you can deploy. 
Here is the tau options environment variable and some of the values that it can take, such as use opt comp to enable compiler based instrumentation. Here we don't need to re instrument the source code, but the compiler itself adds hooks while creating the .o file after the optimization is passed. And it will enable the use of tau with minimal changes. You can track IO, you can specify a selective instrumentation file to be used by the tau instrumenter like this. And there are other options that you can pass to the compiler or the linker. Here is an example of passing the dash R free flag for a Fortran compiler or the opt compens or specifying a selective instrumentation file so you can specify the instrumentation at the loop level in all the routines like this. Here is an example of setting the tau option. So now specify the path to a selective instrumentation file. Recall that Paraprof can create this for you based on the throttle routine. And typically it includes a list, an exclude list of functions where you can say, I don't want to instrument all of these functions. And then you can Specify this file and recompile your application with PDT using the tau compiler script. And it will read this file while instrumenting each file. And then it will not add hooks to these functions. Now, what's interesting is that you can also use this environment variable for tau select file at runtime. And it will allow tau to exclude those functions. But if you are doing this at runtime, you need to compile your code in the form of a dynamic executable. So it can load these Twitter uh, files. Now there were various options that I presented to you. I want to introduce another tool called Tau Commander. Now there is a fair bit of complexity that you may have noticed in the use of the Tau options or the runtime environment variable. And we have a new project called the Tau Commander where we have encapsulated all the complexity of Tau in a single command. So the goal there is, you know, similar to uh, using a GPS or, or, or a map, you could get confused at looking the directions to a certain location in a map, whereas in a GPS, you can just specify the coordinates and it finds the way to get there for you. In the same way, Tau Commander knows how to configure Tau. It knows what to do to get you there. And you just give the high level options. And the way it works is we have a single command called Tau. We say Tau initialize, and it will pick up the configuration that works for you based on whether you specify MPI or OpenMP options. If one does not exist, it will download Tau, configure it with the right option, such as the BFD equals download, the OTF equals download, and so on. And then it will build Tau for you. You just preface Tau in front of everything that you do. So you could say Tau FTN, or Tau AP run, or Tau show, and it will launch all the tools appropriately. If you want to see more information about a particular command, you can just say tau dash dash help or tau show dash dash help. And the, the development of this is being done by Paratools Inc. And you can download tau commander from here. It's also installed as soon as you say module load tau on theta, tau commander is installed in your path. And you can create your own, own uh, Tau configuration. What's interesting is that, you know, many times a package has 10 configurations that are installed by the sysadmin and you want the 11th configuration. When you say Tau initialize, it will check if you have the right permissions to install in the central directory. And if you don't, it will install it in your home directory so you can have all 11 configurations. <coughs> Here is an example of uh, but the tau online help, tau dash dash help. Or you can say tau application create dash dash help and it will show you the options for the sub command. 
there are many different runtime variables in tau here are some examples if you can if you turn on tau trace equals 1 it will enable tracing <coughs> call path profiling can be turned on by tau call path sampling by tau sampling communication matrix call site this is a new and very interesting option which can be used with profiling as well as tracing then we can intercept the, the MPI call and if tau, call site equals one is used then it will show you where that MPI call was invoked in the source code such as foo.f90 at line number 12. So you can see the contribution of each individual MPI call instead of aggregating it across all MPI. So if you had an MPI barrier that took a long time you could see where that MPI barrier was called. If you use tau profile format equals merge then it will generate a single tau profile.xml file instead of a file for each thread. This is especially useful as you use higher core count. You don't litter the directory with many tau profiles. And if you use tau metrics, you can specify liquid or patty metrics like this, where you can specify the patty metric or even energy or time in a comma separated list. This is a new option, tau trace format equals OTF2, which will generate OTF2 traces natively to tau. There are other ways to generate this too, using the score key package. And uh, you can see that tau can interface with uh, multiple packages like this. You can specify a selective instrumentation file. You can track the load on the node. You can uh, look at the memory leak. You can see all the memory options here. So if you would like more information, you can visit our website. Tau is uh, freely available, uh, it's open source package, available for download with a BSC style license. We have created a distribution of an OVA file. You can download it from hpclinux.com. And this is where the development uh, of Tau happens in Eugene at the Performance Research Lab at the University of Oregon. Uh, we have a very active visitor program. If you would like to come work with us for a day or two, we would be happy to invite you. And uh, I look forward to working with you. I would like to thank our sponsors, the Algon National Lab, the Department of Energy, the Exascale Computing Program, ECT Proteus Project, Oak Ridge, uh, Livermore, Los Alamos, Sandia, CNNL, uh, the Department of Defense, through the PET and uh, HPCMP, uh, modernization program, the National Science Foundation through the SI2 SSI program, the NASA, and our partners, uh, in particular the University of Oregon, the Ohio State University, the developers of the Rapid 2 tools, Parasols Inc., the developers of Tau Commander, the University of Tennessee Knoxville for the PAPI group, TU Dresden in uh, uh, Germany, uh, which develops the Vampire tool and Unish Supercomputing Center are partners who develop the score key tool and Opari and Tube and other tools. That's sweet. Uh, any questions? Yes, thank you, Samir. Um, there were a few uh, items uh, that the uh, registrants um, uh, asked about. Uh, so one of them was do you have any particular advice about tracing calls in a third-party <coughs> library? For example, uh, I.O. calls from Silo. So yes, if you say tau exec dash I.O., it will intercept all the POSIX calls in your application. And with a dynamic executable, you can intercept every single call. If you want to see where it comes from, and your third party library has been compiled with a dash C option, you could even enable tau call site equals one and see where the read and write call comes from. Uh, so that's easy to use even with profiles or traces, whether it's the uh, tau native trace format or the OTF2 traces, which can be viewed in Zampier. So tau is in dash IO is the way to use it. Okay. Would it be easy we to also associate have a the I.O. with the, the top-level library call that you're making? Yes, you can you can look at the full call stack uh, as well and uh, intercept those I.O. calls. If you enable event-based sampling, 
and enable uh, the lib unwind EBS unwind equals one. It will unwind the call stack whenever it takes the sample and the read and write calls will be instrumented. There are ways to also instrument your uh, calls if you are using a static library instead of a, uh, if you are using a static binary instead of a, instead of a dynamic executable. And uh, you can set a tau option to track the IO and uh, it, it will intercept those calls even in static like executables. Is that is that uh, okay? Like here, if you were using yeah. the tau mm -hmm. compiler scripts, you could say opt track IO to wrap the POSIX IO call in a static executable. So this right. is, in particular is a good reason to um, disable the Darshan library like, like you were suggesting in your slides because Darshan would try to intercept them as well. Yes, yes. and uh, as I showed in my demo, when you use tau, you should uh, say module unload darshan so that uh, only one NPI wrapper library gets linked in. Uh, by default, if uh, you have multiple NPI wrapper libraries from different tools, you should not uh, use multiple of those uh, wrappers. Uh, you'll get symbol errors and other problems. So just unload the darshan module, load the tau module, compile using tau, or use the tau exec tool. So um, another question that came up was uh, the it's regarding the overlap of communication and computation. So suppose you had a round of point-to-point -point MPI, um, you know, which may or may not be balanced. How would that affect the computation that follows it? Um, do you have any tips on getting a handle on that with Tau? Yes. Uh, so first of all, when you enable event-based sampling, you could see the computation in your code as the MPI call has spawned off the, you know, the I receive or the I send operation. And then you can see the contribution of the MPI weight in your application as well and see how much time was spent in each of those code region, so you'll be able to evaluate that uh, that in this case, MPI weight was consuming, you know, 50% of the time, and uh, the time spent in- uh, I think, it, I think in this case, we're below. interested in, um, in this case, we're interested in um, non-blocking communication that's happening in the background during your, during your computation. Yeah, so so uh, what we will see on a per thread basis is exactly what uh, your CPU was executing at any given point in time. And you'll be able to see the contribution of the computation. You'll also see the, the time spent in the MPI operation. Now you're saying that if you want to track the time spent in a different thread, which is doing the, the MPI communication, right? So if you instrument the, that particular thread using pthread API or OMPT, you'll see multiple threads, one of which may be one of the progress threads, and you'll be able to see the contribution in that thread. Uh, earlier I showed the example of uh, games where there were some data server threads where we were looking at the contribution of the MPI calls, and we could identify exactly how much time was spent in various call sites for that. Okay, so the main thing is to look for the progress thread in the MPI library. Yes, exactly. So, makes sense. Okay, and then what about really large runs where you're, you know, you have hundreds of thousands of ranks. Are there any, are there any gotchas that people should watch out for? Uh, yes. When they're trying to file those? That, that's a very good question. And, you know, uh, in this small case, the default case, we saw that Tau was, uh, was writing out files uh, one per thread. And uh, 
that may be limiting for really large runs. And so oh, I would recommend yeah. using the tau profile format equals merged option where you generate a single file where the MPI finalized uh, process will, will uh, operation will actually coalesce all the files into a single file and uh, you will not 